let me, let me talk now about his work and his life, uh, firstly his, his life. Uh, the heading, Archibald Knox, humble servant of God in the ministry of the beautiful, is, as I think many of you will know, it's on his gravestone and, and really summarizes, I think with the words humble and beautiful in particular, um, absolutely summarizes perfectly, I think, the, the man or aspects of the man. But a little bit of just fact, born in 19, 1864, of course, uh, just a few months ago in 150 years. He was educated in Douglas. His family came from Scotland, I should say, so he was essentially first generation Isle of Man, but he absolutely embraced the whole uh, spirit of, uh, of, of the island. He taught at the Douglas School of Art before moving to London in around 1897. Uh, and it was at that time probably he started working uh, for the Silver Studios, who were the designers for Liberty, commercial designers. And he probably spent about six or seven years only designing for Liberty. So all the material on the stand, some of it was made slightly later, but all of it designed in that period. And really after he left um, uh, working for Liberty, he taught at Surrey Art Colleges in London. But by 1912, he returned to the Isle of Man, where he remained for the rest of his life. And he was always a teacher. I think at his heart, he was always an art teacher. A quick flavor of, 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 of the background or context of his upbringing. This is where he was born in Cronkbourne, uh, roughly, not, not exactly. Um, at that time, his family were not rich. They became uh, reasonably wealthy through their uh, industrial, I think it was agricultural uh, 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 manufacturer they had. But at this time, not, not wealthy. Uh, and then in Solby, I think this picture is actually 1904, this is where he lived on those houses on the left, the white houses on the left. I think it's two combined, or maybe the one you can see. That's where he lived and worked when he returned to the Isle of Man in 1900 to 1904, and then went back to London after that for a period. So trying to unpick Knox the person, and it's not easy. I think both Stephen Martin, even Liam, uh, say it's hard to actually fathom exactly who the man was, but I've picked out some quotes that perhaps epitomize him for me, uh, and they're brilliant quotes, and they're mainly about art rather than people, I think, read them that way. So, aim at order, hope for beauty, is the most concise, uh, brilliant way, I think, of describing, um, and witty way of describing modernism, and this point that he was trying to get beauty into his work as a modernist. The final quote there, venturesome modernist, is something he wrote in 1913, about his time at the Douglas School of Art uh, with a group of friends in around the 1890s. And so he saw himself as a modernist. It wasn't something by chance that happened. He just didn't talk about it a lot as the, as the more famous uh, designers did. Never be ordinary, better be nothing than that is a wonderful quote. It's about art, it's not really about people. Uh, and it's all about working hard to get that essence, that quality that he looked for. And similarly, art is in everything we choose if we put it there. Other quotes or other extracts from letters, and I think this, this, cons this sense that he was above all a teacher and passionate about his art, these were his themes, and really nothing else mattered particularly. Money was maybe important, but not that important. Uh, certainly uh, networking, social networking, politicking, success were not part of his DNA, I think. So don't slacken, slacken in your work. Work and think, and think and work. That is the royal road, there is no other. He wrote that to a student. And then on the right, um, I don't know what to make of this quote, but it just has a sense of humor to it. What do you think of my art, he's, my news, he's saying. Uh, my pictures are being trundled to Winnipeg. This is following a um, Canadian exhibition, uh, but the blighters want to buy them. Uh, and he was very attached to his art and the Isle of Man, uh, the sense that it should remain and be part of the Isle of Man. Rather than put this under the art category, I put this under the person category. He had an incredible ability, which is artistic, to do this wonderful uh, his version of Celtic Knots, of which more in a moment. But this is just the kind of thing he did. This is a Christmas card to a good friend, 1912, a, a good luck card, excuse me. And you can, you can barely read it, but it's, it, that's what it says. And you just see this phenomenal um, detail. And that's just something he sketched out for a friend. Similarly, and I think to the same friend, one of his benefactors on the island, a merry Xmast. Um, which, again, I wouldn't strain yourself trying to interpret too quickly, but that's what it says. And interestingly, if you look on the right side, we do have some jewellery with that harp-like uh, balance to it in the, um, in, the, uh, in the exhibition.